Hello everyone, welcome to Somehow I Design. This is Yunus Emin Aljol and today we are here for the fourth part of our advanced leveling tutorial guide. So, uh, as we do as we do in the front overhang, pretty much uh, we will be uh, applying the same workflow as it goes to the rear. So I have increased that uh, snap division option uh, from 2 to 4 to capture that uh, middle uh, point of this curve. So that I can create this uh, kind of clockwise uh, patch layout. Um, when it comes to the rear wheel arch, as I said, we will be uh, almost applying the same method as we uh, applied in the front overhang. So I'm just extending uh, some surfaces and then trim converting them to meet that uh, corner patch uh, to meet that patch layout and the corners and the edges here <clears throat> to obtain the um, curvature alignment I am kind of increasing the CV uh, numbers CV rows kind of extending the surfaces until uh, they meet um, at the edge wise like deleting the history um, untrimming the surfaces, realigning, reproject aligning, yeah, increasing or decreasing the CV layout. It's just not that big. Uh, it, it doesn't have that big importance at the moment. I'm just thinking it through that. How can I, again, cap capture that uh, rear wheel arch uh, as I do a bunch of those uh, changes? It's like back in my head, I was thinking, you know, this is kind of... Uh, hard area to uh, capture and yeah as as i model i think at the same time about how can i kind of solve those problems i have added one more row and like pulling 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 the complete rows uh, outside of the car because i think like it is it is bending inside too much so as I do that, I have uh, realigned that uh, realigned that other surface to make it uh, follow what I do over there with the ropes. Yeah, I am just pulling them by using uh, surface normals with CV transform tool. And yeah, it's just it should be. I I feel like it should be more kind of uh, shoulder muscle over there. It's just bending in. Too much yeah but no worries it's just me trying to uh, configure how can I capture that feeling or how can I solve at least the patch layout because the patch layout I mean it is it is really hard until you have the answers and before it's like um, you are trying your uh, best to get to get at that certain point and after that you reach uh, you reach that level it's kind of resolve itself uh, it's getting easier than you think so i'm just like looking at the zebra sometimes and trying to yeah uh, centralize that highlight making sure that the highlight is going center of the um wheel lip and simple uh, surfaces i have i've been adding it's just rail tool Trail, skin, um, draft tools, it's the main, I'm just creating the main, so as you can see here, I am, I have selected the, all, all the CV points, and then went to the information under that the menu, and I am controlling the um, coordinates of each X, Y, Z, so if they are same, they are on top of each other, they are positional, it means. I need that I need those uh, positional because I'm just going to be trimming away the rest of the surface of that main side body that is why I was checking that. increase the numbers to get the um, positional continuity over there it's, at the moment it's not that important the CV layouts is just actually I'm just uh, thinking it through the hard thing is over there is kind of how can we connect rear 
overhang and the side wheel arch together yeah it is kind of hot topic that i'm thinking in my head and yeah just wasting my time looking at those zebra <laughs> Oopsie. Some minor touches until I feel satisfied with what I have over there. Just no need to be that much of a precise at the moment because we're gonna be we're gonna be changing that a lot. Yeah. I am kind of um, reorganizing the curve layout according to that surface uh, because you always always go like try to capture these squares it's supposed to be four-sided every surface that you create it's supposed to be four-sided surface it's just square or rectangular I'm not satisfied with that alignment over there um yeah it's just it's supposed to be transitional surface it's like supposed to be smooth transition over there but kind of giving me the weird edge so i kind of rethink about how can i create that early actually which in a couple minutes we will be changing that patch layout yeah this is exactly uh, happening as the same what we did in the front overhang. It's just curve layout we have created as an initial study and then we try to uh, implement some basic surfacing and that surfacing shows us kind of uh, another direction and we are trying to adapt ourselves to that, uh, trying, to, trying to get the uh, best result out of it. And uh, that is why we are constantly uh, changing the layouts because it is really crucial until you find yourself having the uh, satisfied, complete um, patch layout, and then it will be getting easier to yeah reorganize. Because at the end of the video, you will be seeing. A um, I kind of felt like after I have completed completed the rear uh, side and I feel like proportionally something is missing. Okay, we kind of capture as it goes to the sketch with the uh, side view, uh, the um, side glass, let's say. But the thing is, we should actually lower the side glass a little bit down and the belt line and the shoulder line at the same time, those three. We should be um, lowering them because uh, those lines are pretty much uh, horizontal to the ground. A li little bit angle it, it has, uh, but uh, as in the model that we have right now, it is too angular. It's ju just straightly going uphill, so it kind of makes our um, rear shoulder is like bigger than it's supposed to be. So I'm just kind of be adjusting at the end of the video and you will see before and after shots and it's like pretty much 10, 5 or 10 minute uh, study after I created the complete uh, layout. As you can see here, it's just the railing, straight rail tool to create the rear. And yeah, realigning the, realigning the curves over there. The model is alive. The model is alive and telling you something about the topology. So you just kind of keep updating your uh, ideas through. And yeah. Realigning some stuff, snapping each other and creating squares. As you can see over there, after that a small rectangle, we have triangle. But what we do is to create the rail tool first by using two edges my screen just went away sorry and then uh, we have kind of uh, 
projected that edge to trim that out. It's that triangle surface has four side if you untrim. So this is this is a good lesson to learn. It's it, it is never three sided uh, patch layout. It's always four sided patch layout, but we have uh, trimmed that out. Yeah, it's like I'm looking at the sketch and changing some features over there. My cat is mewing right now. Saw something outside. Well, anyways. After having a look at the sketch, I kind of feel the differences. And I'm just thinking through my head, how can I get closer to the sketch? And uh, there is a particular... Um, ideation when it comes to the uh, lower side of the rear view and I'm just trying to capture that and the rest of it we will be kind of trimming out by using the, that that main surface but the question is how can we relate to that connection between the uh, rear shoulder and the main surfaces yeah because this is this is looking bigger than it's supposed to be yeah this is like too wide we gotta we gotta do something over there yeah it is too wide it's just it's not looking right but we gotta keep pushing we gotta, gotta keep going we cannot just start we cannot wait until it solves itself yeah we just gotta continue building and then we will kind of Finding ourselves having the solutions, yeah. We just gotta look at again rail tool and then projecting that edge. It's not hundred percent positional, but you cannot see anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, we are just kind of closing that patch layout, and I'm thinking like, how can I? This is totally unnecessary surface. It's just you gotta get rid of it. Actually, it's the worst worst thing ever. I'm thinking like how should I react to that? It's just blending. But there is not kind of blend as such. Yeah. I just gotta close that up. And the shoulder has considerably bigger muscles. But I am thinking through my head that we can we can get that level as we push forward because the crucial thing at the moment is to have closed up box modeling it's not like we are just going to be capturing all these design details as in one go i'm just trying the most important thing here is i'm just trying to capture the closed up box modeling overall when we go to the front when we go to the rear when we go to the side view top view it's just gonna be volumetrically um, closer to the sketch this is the first step and the for, uh, for this part of, uh, for this video, we will be having that. And after this video, we will be kind of getting details in a more tense way. Because to obtain that level of muscle uh, on the rear, uh, rear wheel arch, we just gotta kind of apply the uh, molding color uh, material over there. It's just the plastic. Uh, plastic material so we, we're just gonna build on top of it it seems like I don't know um, we will see but definitely we, we should have this wheel arch shorter than it's right now yeah I'm trying to capture the sketch over there but it seems like that uh, rear glass is too much back on back back in the car it's supposed to be go inside a little bit we're gonna break the side view sketch over there in the end i'm just going to be pushing inside a little bit and you will see uh snap between the volumetric changes at the last part of the video at the moment i am just trying to as i said uh capture the closed up box modeling 
I mean, design details at this phase is, is unnecessary because we will be creating those design details uh, from the main surfaces. <clears throat> yeah, as I do this, I kind of feel like, yeah, I can use that edge. It's just kind of, yeah, closing itself over there. If I kind of extend that VLR surface until it touches that point. So, yeah, you see, we kind of, we found the answer. But if we kind of, if we were uh, stopping the development of the model, we would never uh, end up finding that solution. Yeah, we just kept pushing the model and then the patch layout kind of revealed itself and say, hey, just use that corner. Why not? Yeah. Give it a little bit of crown. Yeah, it's supposed to be like, like I said, more muscular than right now. But this is this is just so straight. It's just straightly going over there. We need more muscles. We need more highlights. Um, walking around over there that area. But as I said, just make sure we have the patch layout right as much as possible rather than capturing the old details of, of the design at, as in one go. To be honest, it's um, there are, some of you may know, there are so many modeling techniques and you, you probably heard subdivision modeling. Actually at this phase, the surface, surface modeling as in one go, it's just one of the hardest and one of the important skill sets and one of the hardest way to build the model. Um, I mean, I was like, I would probably, in a real case scenario, uh, I would probably uh, begin with subdivision modeling. After capturing some volumetric design details, I would do reverse engineering to that uh, subdivision surfaces since they are kind of mesh. Uh, we should have NURBS modeling in the end, since this will, let's say, this is going to the production, we probably, uh, it, is, it is better to have NURBS modeling. But as you try to capture the design, NURBS modeling is just a little bit harder than subdivision modeling. But this is an amazing skill set if you are able to capture design sketches. Uh, by just starting to do NURBS modeling. It's just rockstar skill set. But most of the designers use uh, subdivision modeling for the initial uh, phase of the design works. And then eventually at some, at the, at the certain phases, uh, this should be converted to the NURBS modeling, which is called reverse engineering in 3D model work. Yeah. It has its own uh, rules, kind of. You are just uh, you are kind of thinking the deviation between the nerves uh, surfaces and the subdivision surfaces. You are just trying to capture as close as possible to that surface. But um, when it go when it comes to subdivision modeling, it is just so many radical movements you can do as in one shot. So that is why so many. Uh, so many high level of deviation um, possibilities so it's like you cannot get closer you may not get closer to that subdivision surfaces because the deviation between subdivision and nerves should be uh, higher to reflect that quality surface and it means that you cannot push through the subdivision modeling until the end of the project yeah you just gotta be 15% of the project time, subdivision modeling is okay. But the rest of the parts until it goes to the engineering side and all that stuff, it's got to be nerves. Yeah. As you see, we have closed up box modeling. Finally, we have some open areas, of course, but it doesn't matter. We are kind of getting there, yeah. And yeah, one thing that bothers me also was the 
uh, was that line. It's just going uphill too much. It's it it gotta be uh, parallel to the ground. So I'm just gonna be applying that, changing the volumes. This is like the car is something. It's just going. It's like going uh, down the hill. It's just rear is too much up, and we gotta change that. We gotta fix that actually, which I do here. Yeah. Yeah, as I was saying, I would definitely prefer subdivision modeling as in the early phases of the project since it is much easier to create the big volumetric uh, shapes with the initial design details on it. But that actually means you gotta do it again. Uh, and from subdivision to nerves modeling, it's not that easy. It's not that easy to convert the, that those uh, subdivision surfaces to NURBS modeling. It takes time. It, it is kind of, yeah, uh, it takes it takes huge time. That is why sometimes I uh, rather to jump on the surface modeling first rather than the subdivision. But it depends. It depends on the it depends on the designer and the modeler. But yeah, again, uh, this tutorial will hopefully uh, cover your nervous modeling questions because it's what we do here is really, really um, advanced level stuff. So as you see here, I since I have divided that wheel lip surface, I cannot align as in one go. There is a gap between, so I will divide that wheel lip. Um, and by having the minimum amount of deviation, I will create another square over there. It's something like extension of that wheel lip until the bottom curve. I'm just duplicating the edges and I'm just, I'm just gonna attach and build simple square out of it. And I will be aligning that rocker panel surface to that patch so right now it can be easily uh, closed up connection between because it used to have so many patch layouts over there right now it's just one patch layout is trying to uh, meet with the other um, of course there's a deviation over there but it's just something we can tolerate <clears throat> As you see, I'm just trying to pull the design details a uh, lower. And since remember, creating the side view took our whole time, uh, as in the last we last uh, part, the third part. But at the moment, editing the side view is not taking that that much of a time. It's just five minute works over there. Because we kind of created created the base uh, topology, base methodology over there, and so adopting it, it is easier than creating it from zero. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. There is a rear view left. It kind of this kind of kind of saving the uh, proportion of. Uh, proportional data because rear wheel lip used to look much more smaller than the front so it was th this was the reason like i said before so we are kind of fixing it so this in so this way it will be uh, looking more realistic yeah yeah from 2d to uh, 3d model it's just it's really hard. It's really hard to set up the overall volume because uh, 2D sketch is generally exaggerated 
and once we have let's say the first initial thing we we do is was the make the wheels smaller and make, make the wheels in a kind of uh, realistic dimensions and what that was doing to the model is just if you, if you change the wheels it's just you just change the overall complete volumetric data as you see in the sketch that uh, rear wheel arch is it, it's not looking that small as in the side view sketch yeah it's just bigger than it's supposed to be be yeah because we just make make the wheel in a uh, real world dimension so over there it was just exaggerated which is constantly uh, being done uh, in the automotive design industry car designers want wants to uh, make their sketches more in a more appealing way so which is just a normal stuff so yeah at the moment i have fixed the overall volume so we will see we will see uh, before and after shots uh, right now uh, we are coming to the end of this video by the way i have also imported uh, wheels uh, png file and place them as if we have you know wheel gaps or something like that as you see that proportional model changing is kind of you know making it better yeah this seems this seems much more realistic than than before yeah i guess we are done for the video guys and thanks for watching until here don't forget to subscribe like and comment below See you on the next one. Yeah, bye-bye.